The long awaited video is here. So after a little over a week of non-stop work, I have finally built a dream hutch for my rabbits. So let's just get right into the build of it and then after that, the tour. Can't see my husband at all because we have, we have how many? 32. We have 32. Ah, 32 two by fours. I counted. In the SUV. This is gonna be our rabbit hunt. What I'm doing this time around, instead of building the whole thing and then painting it, I'm just cutting everything out and painting it flat um, because I think that's gonna be a lot easier. I'm using a paint roller, so that's helpful. And then once I'm done painting it, uh, we're gonna assemble it. And so then when we put it together, it should be good to go. I feel like this is probably gonna be one of my best building projects because I am being so precise with all of my angles. I just really love this paint color. And if you guys are wondering, it is called Valspar Pine Forest. So here's what we got going on so far. And essentially I have to do the exact same thing for the back, but this is the front frame. And I'm definitely gonna need Jameson to help me lift it. It's huge. I'm gonna do the exact same thing off camera to the back part of it, and then I will be right back. All right guys, so here is the update. My drill smells like it is burning, so I'm giving that a break and I'm gonna talk to you guys for a little bit. I did go ahead and add um, four on each where it's attached on each one. Um, sorry, I'm a mess, there we go. So um, four screws on each place where it's attached on the side, on the middle. Um, I was a little bit concerned about uh, when we pick it up to assemble the two sides together. So I went ahead and I put these uh, temporary pieces of wood up. They are screwed in four different places, kind of zigzagged, um, and they are on each middle part because that those were the parts that I was mainly concerned about. And when I get it set up, I don't think I'm gonna need those anymore. And then here is the back. The back is just a little bit shorter. And I did the exact same thing with the braces on this one as well. We're gonna have to lift them up and then we have the side pieces to assemble them together and hopefully it will sit up straight. show you guys what I got done today because I did have to stop the camera for just a little bit but I got all of the roofing structures on all right so here's our workstation <laughs> um, so we have the hutch structure up I used joists on these bottom ones and then I ran out of joists so I thought I had more than that um, but I actually didn't need them for these because um, when I was putting these in I actually had to hammer them down and then I screwed them in from right here. So I really didn't need joists. Um, it's pretty tight in there. And it's just basically a metal support um, because 
it, it needed that for sure. And also I think that the cages will be sitting, um, the, the cages start there and then they, they end somewhere over here. I'm not completely sure where they end. I have to measure that. I haven't gotten that far yet. Um, but then the roof, I'm so, so proud of the roof because roofing is one of those things that I've always kind of struggled with. And this one has like the perfect 15 degree angle and I'm super, super excited. Hang on, let me climb up there and show you guys. All right, so check this out. This is crazy, I love this so much. I'm so proud of this. Um, and how I did this was before I even started putting everything together, I took this two by four right here at the very start and I ripped it at a 15 degree angle. So I cut that entire two by four and I'll put a picture up um, and show you guys. But, but so the whole thing is cut at an angle and so then these uh, supports for the roof are also cut at an angle. So everything sits super flush. Super excited about this. It looks so good. And the middle has two supports. I just wanted to make sure that the middle had plenty of support because I don't want anything to start to sag. I'm being such a perfectionist about this entire project, but um, I honestly am so proud of it because I've gotten so good at building over the last year. So awesome. Look, this is how I label things in case front, front, front side. <laughs> hey, it worked, right? Uh, it worked for me. Did make enough room back here so I can walk through. It's kind of like a back alley. Um, and the poop, when we put the, um, the metal roofing up, we are also gonna be putting metal roofing underneath the first row of cages so the poop falls out the back, it falls back here, and the chickens can get at it. And also I can get back here with a rake very easily to pick up that. We're just not gonna be dealing with trays anymore. I'm sick of trays, so sick of them. So, um, but very excited about how this looks. Very excited about how big it is. It's gigantic. I'm, I'm so excited. Um, this is by far the biggest building project that I have ever <laughs> endeavored. <laughs> nights where nothing wants to go right but I did end up getting all of the metal cut all 172 inches it's getting dark can't probably can't tell um, but it is time for me to put this stuff away and we'll get this roof on this weekend or a bit behind schedule but it's gonna get done probably this weekend <music>
can't believe how well this turned out. I've seen lots of photos online that are very similar to this style of hutch, and over the last several months, probably since February, I have been collecting those photos and I have just been tweaking my design in Illustrator for a really long time. And so it went so smooth, it was still a lot of work to get done, but it was a very easy process to build this and overall I'm just I'm really excited about it. So let's show you guys some of the features of the teal stone hutch. So each cage here is 36 by 30 and it's going to be so much better for my mamas and babies. Um, 30 by 30 cages that I was using isn't a big difference but when you have babies that start hopping around and exploring every inch counts trust me. These are KW cages and they are a bit of an investment but I can tell that these cages are going to last. I am a huge fan already. These cages are sturdy. There was nothing that was broken when it arrived to me, so I am just a huge fan of KW cages now. I will be buying more cages from them in the future. Each cage here has baby saver wire on the bottom, which basically means it's just a lot smaller of a gap up until here. And so when the kits start jumping out of the nest box and start exploring the cage, they won't be able to fall out. KW cages gives you the option to upgrade your flooring. And so what I did was I upgraded all of the flooring to HD 14 gauge. And so it's very, very thick, very sturdy. It's actually very comfortable. I did choose the standard partition, which is the divider between the two cages. And the standard was just the uh, half inch by one inch wire. I wanted it to be standard because eventually we will be running box fans and I want the airflow to be able to go right through the hutch. And also I just think it's good for rabbits to have company. So I just chose the standard partition and if I ever have problems, I can always use like flashing or something to cover it up. But so far we have not had any problems and I'm really happy that I chose the wire divider. And as you can see on the sides here, there is a gap. Like I said, I have actually designed this hutch to be big enough to hold standard box fans on the side. So they will sit on this two x four down here. I'll probably have to strap them in somehow, but it's enough room for a box fan to sit in here. So when it gets really hot next year, I'll just be able to turn those on and we'll have just airflow flowing continuously throughout the hutch. I am a huge advocate for airflow. I think it's one of the most underrated things when it comes to housing rabbits. Um, so if you're having respiratory problems uh, like I was last year, airflow is probably one of the key factors in preventing that. If you have that kind of a problem, try adding fans, try adding more airflow. I think the stuffiness of a rabbit's living conditions can definitely cause that. So that is why we are avoiding that here. So on the bottom row, all of the droppings and urine falls to the ground. Just free falls down there. We're not dealing with trays down there. And on the top row, I have installed plastic roofing that slopes downward. I really should have taken a picture of this before I put the top row of cages on, but I was really confused because I didn't know how to make this kind of, it, it's, it's free hanging and I needed it to be on hinges sort of. So what I ended up doing was I screwed in eyelets into the two by four up there and I just attached it with zip ties. Zip ties are like my best friend. <laughs> so um, basically the zip ties and the eyelets act as kind of a hinge. So uh, this sits at about a 12 to 13 degree angle, I think. And it just rests on the back cage here. And it just falls out the back here. And Ronan, stop eating poop, icky. If I ever do have to clean these out, all I really need to do is just take the rabbits out of the top row and just spray it down with the hose really quick and it will all fall out into this back alley here. I wanted this back alley back here just in case I needed to come around here and take care of any problems. And also you might be wondering, Tiffany, how are you gonna protect these rabbits from cold weather? And I will answer that for you. I don't wanna be dealing with plywood anymore. Plywood is heavy and I just don't like dealing with it. So what I'm gonna be doing is I'm gonna be buying a couple of custom made tarps, one there, one there, one over here, one over here, and just attach them to the back. We're gonna see maybe about getting insulated tarps for the back. And in the summer, they can just be taken right back down so that we have all the ventilation that we could possibly want. I'm still not 100% sure how I'm gonna handle the sides here, because obviously we need it to be vented for box fans to be able to pull air in. So we might do tarps, uh, we might do kind of a shutter system, but I will definitely get there. And I'll share with you guys what I end up doing with that. 
Some exciting plans for the back here is I will actually be installing a rainwater harvesting system so that we can hopefully uh, be able to water our rabbits and chickens just from a dispenser back here um, so that I don't have to walk from here all the way to the house every single time. So I will definitely update you guys if I get to the rainwater harvesting this year. And for the front in the winter, um, I will be adding a clear plastic sheet so it acts as a windbreak so they don't get like cold winter air in there but they do get all the light. That's something that worked really well on my old hutch and so I wanna carry that over and do that again over here. Speaking of light, did you guys notice my LEDs? <laughs> LEDs are one of those things that like makes my heart really happy because <laughs> just to be able to see this in the dark It lights up half the backyard. I feel like and it just looks so good We have the LEDs running all the way around the bottom row and we have them running all the way along the top row I am just super ecstatic about the LEDs. I just think they look so good um, And at the end of this video, I will definitely post a picture of what those look like in the dark in case some of you weren't aware, rabbits don't actually like to breed when they haven't had enough light. In the winter, when the days are shorter and they don't have enough light, a lot of the times people say that they have a really hard time getting their rabbits to breed. So if that is the case for you, I would definitely recommend trying out LED lights and seeing if that works for you. As of right now, the lights are hooked up via extension cord. <laughs> so it doesn't look amazing right now. Um, this just runs along my fence. It's, it was nice how I could just run it along the new fence like that, but it, oh, it goes all the way back to our laundry room door right there. And uh, that's not gonna be a permanent thing. Eventually we're gonna run electricity along the fence line instead, and that will help us run the LEDs and the four box fans for next summer. Oh look, we have a little baby that decided to come out. They're gonna start terrorizing you, Miss Holly. So you guys, I hope you enjoyed this tour of my brand new rabbit hutch. I know I'm really excited. You will definitely be seeing more of the teal stone hutch in the future. And I will share with you guys any upgrades that I do to it with the tarps or the water harvesting system or whatever I do to it. You guys will see it. Be inspired guys, and I will see you in the next video. Bye.